Good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to the place to be each and every Sunday night. We're tonight with a bumper crop of Formula 4 drivers, some of the best of the best going around. We are here for Season 32, Round 11, live and exclusive on Top Split TV from Bell Isle. Joining me, as always, is the chaotic one himself, Mr. Corey Steinhauser. I'm Alex McKellar. Corey... Big night, big soft, massive racing ahead for us tonight. Oh, absolutely, Alex. A 61-94 strength of field. You needed a 51-77 to get into this race, which is uh, exactly what Luke Witten did. But my heart goes out to Donald Subbanow. Missed out by just six I rating on getting into this race. So he's the number one of uh, second split tonight. So uh, hopefully we can uh, get a good report from him on how that race goes. Oh, clown down, everyone. There's a clown down. He's in the second split. Poor old Donald. He's been going so good lately as well. But uh, let's check out who has made it into the big one here tonight, starting with that car number one, the Cowboy, Sam Devantia. He's just sitting on the beautiful 9-0-0 by way of I rating. No fear of him missing out here tonight, but he has indeed made it in. Adam Miles, who's uh, yet just coming out of the pits now, is car number two. He, we haven't seen Adam for a long time. Mr. Skippy himself, of course, the community rep for the Skip Barbers and the Formula Fords, if I'm not mistaken. Fantastic to see Adam out there on track here tonight. Tim Hendrickson's car number three. Our top three drivers between eight and 9,000 high rating. The Team Torpedoes, Tim Hendrickson in the blue and orange mobile. It was a broadcast race earlier in the weekend, a race spot, and Tim drove away from Miles and Devante. Both of them looking to get their own back here tonight. Henry Moore is car number four from UK and I. Henry just, I believe, purchased the track today. So we can't expect too much from Henry, but the quality's there. He's had a couple of wins this season, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, keep an eye on young Henry just for a bit of a wild card, that's for sure. Dimitri Filippides, the international man of mystery, representing FPM Oval Mateen here tonight. Starts his first hot lap as car number five. Fraser Smith, the Brown Bomber, been uh, the author of so many stories in the last few weeks of this season. Some fantastic driving, uh, big grins from the young Englishman. And Medema uh, is out there once again. Uh, great to see Anne back. Car number seven this week. And a returning SNL uh, favourite is uh, young Mr. Brett Burney. Car number eight here for McFlabby Race. We haven't seen Brett. I don't know. I, don't th I think we saw him in Hedeth earlier this season. Potential was it last season? I can't remember. Anyway, Brett's back. Done a lot of laps here. Looking to stamp his authority on this one. Yuan C. Lin. Brett C. Yuan C. Back. Swift Cooper Racing. Car number nine. And the leading, the head clown himself. Uh, a smaller shutter here tonight, but uh, car number 10 is uh, young Vasco Sarovsky Corey. Two out of three clowns ain't bad, they say. Well, that's right, and uh, speaking of clowns, number 11 is going to be Mark Lay, also representing Team Clowns Racing, and uh, he's got a spotter tonight rather than Vasco, so uh, that's interesting. The team boss man doesn't get the spotter. Uh, coming up as car number 12, Glenn Corrigan for Jim's mowing. It's great to see Glenn out there. He had a decent run and uh, a little bit of a scary situation for him in the warm-up race as well. But uh, hopefully he can get out there and stamp some authority on this race. Uh, we've got Marjan Arnolds from Bellano as lucky car number 13 here tonight. It's great to see uh, Marjan out there. And then Luke Witten from Team Milo wrapping up the field, as I said, a 51.77 as car number 14 here tonight, Alex. And he's just finished his first lap, slowed himself into P8. Absolutely, mate. And as you say, he snuck in as car number 14 here in this uh, just a tick under 6.2k soft. When these cars came out, week 13, we saw the likes of Verstappen and some of the really upper echelons of iRacing come out and race these cars. Not since then have we seen this level of strength of field. Uh, and I can tell you these guys will take it a lot more seriously than those in uh, week 13. But the quality will be up there for sure. The drivers out there, McBurney, uh, leading the way for the ANZ guys. But what I was noting, Corey, is nearly half the field uh, is ANZ club drivers. So 
given that uh, we did this to support the community uh, in the local driving scene and it's brought out some of the best from across the world as well. Great to see the ANZ representation in this bumper field. Oh, absolutely, Alex. And, um, you know, I think the fact that this has become um, so diverse with where people are coming from is definitely attributed to the Australians stepping up and making their races count now and getting up into the upper echelons of where we see them quite regularly here in uh, the top split race. And uh, it looks like... Well, most people starting to finish their second laps off. Now, Tim Hendrickson put a 36.053 to sit on the pole. And Philippides has put himself into second. Just one and a half tenths off. McBurney. McBurney's oh, McBurney. dropped it on pole. Devantia can only manage fourth. Lay's coming up close to finish his, but Sorovsky will beat him across the line. Will he beat him on the timesheet? Car number 10, the head clown crosses the line. What's he got for us? He's up to P5 on the grid. Mark Lay's teammate takes the short line through and pips his teammate just by a... What's that? Oh, by actually by a couple of tenths. He got him a good one there, Corey. Oh, I think Adam Miles is the last driver out there yet to set a time. What's the returning king of the skip he's got for us? Crosses the line, car number two, the blue and gold machine. Good enough for P6. What a strong field this is. The likes of Adam Miles buried down deep in the field in P6, Corey. Yeah, absolutely, Alex. In fact, there's a few drivers of uh, notable worth buried down the field a little bit. Fraser Smith, who uh, has had an issue on his second lap, he's down in P9. Uh, Henry Moore, also with an issue on his second lap, down in 13th, Luke Witten. Uh, we saw him climb up to eighth before. He's had an issue on his second lap as well, Alex, and he will be out of 14th for this race. So uh, the uh, cars are stacked against a few of these drivers, and this isn't really known as the uh, easiest of tracks to make passes on, especially with the uh, tight nature of some of these corners. Yeah, and the tight nature of the field, mate. Um, you'd expect folks like Witten, who's had great pace. Here's the thing. I was just thinking, he's got good pace here, and then I thought, I'm looking up the list of drivers who hasn't got good pace here. So... Moving forward in in on this track uh, in a typical field can be challenging, let alone a field like this. Uh, once again, nearly just under 6.2k strength of field. That's uh, unheard of uh, in these cars, uh, except on nights like this where we get a, a, a relatively small split relegating uh, even 5k drivers, uh, let alone 4k drivers and below into the second split. So... Uh, expect the caliber to be up, the uh, the pace to be up, certainly. Poles are 36 dead, uh, which is a fantastic time. At four one hundredths separating the top two, uh, where there's, then there's a bit of a gap. Uh, great to see Philippides. I, I was checking out. He's done quite a few races here this week. Uh, so expect him, obviously, to be on pace, uh, but certainly have the runs in his legs to compete with the, the likes of the, the folks up the front of this field. So... Fantastic to see such a strong field. The whole field separated by just over a second, uh, but plenty of uh, folks just not quite getting it sorted in uh, in quali uh, on their second laps in particular, which is coverage for why that's uh, so spread. But Brett McBurney returns to SNL Racing with a fantastic job in quali to start out a pole. Alongside him on the front row will be Team Torpedoes, Tim Hendrickson, FBM over Martins, Dimitri Filippides, International Man of Mystery starting out a third alongside him on the second row will be Cowboy Racing, the Cowboy, Sam Devantia, uh, who is, uh, of course, car number one here. <laughs> Leading the way for the Clowns will be Mark Lay, who starts out of fifth tonight. Alongside him, out of six will be Adam Miles from UK and I. Vasco Sorosk will be standing down the tailpipe of his teammate, starting out of seventh. TNT Racing's Martin and Aldis returns tonight and starts out of eighth. Fraser Smith from UK and I starts out of ninth. And Medema from uh, Benelux starts out of 10th. You won't see Lynn for Swift Cooper Racing out of 11th. Uh, 12th will be Glenn Corrigan for Jim's Mowing. Henry Moore, first uh, sort of sighting laps almost, starts out of 13th. Luke Witten for Team Milo out of 14th. Corey rounds out uh, your starting grid. It's going to be interesting to see some of these fast guys coming up through the field. As you said, Henry Moore, very limited laps uh, before the warm-up race. He only had five laps completed around this circuit. So uh, we'll see what his practice has yielded him here as everyone is now on the grids. 
The pulses start to rise as much as the revs, as the red lights mean rev. And the green lights mean go as Fred the Flag Marshal vigorously waves his green flag upon the field and the drivers start turning down into turns one and two. And uh, turn two can be a bit of a difficult place, especially on cold tyres with speed, Alex. Very easy to drift it out into that outside wall. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, once the tyres warm up, it can be quite an exhilarating run. Turn three is where all the action will be as the cars fan out, looking to get positions if they can early on. Oh, there's a dive up the inside from the Brown Bomber. And they all seem to have made it through. Okay, McBurney still leading the way from Hendrickson. Philippides, they're pretty much in running order. In fact, uh, it's down in P8 before you see Smith, who's made the only move. And there's a bit of a gap breaking up already uh, in and around that move by Fraser Smith. He's got past Medema, but it's broken up uh, the field into two packs already, Corey. Yeah, that's right, Alex. He's going to have to put in some hard yards here if he wants to close up that gap, which is uh, quite large, as you said as uh, we come down off the uh, the curvy back straight into the most technical section on this track. Uh, I usually just hold it in second gear here, pin it for most of it, just using the brake to help steer the car into the corners. And uh, it looks like these guys are getting it done quite nicely. This uh, turn 11, very, very tight, over 90 degree right-hand corner can also be used as a passing opportunity later in a race if drivers start getting desperate, Alex. Yeah, that's it, Corey. Uh, and Desperation Stakes might be the order of the night once it starts to get a bit later in this one. I'm sure there'll be plenty of patience early on. But, uh, you know, when it uh, when it all to play for there at the end of the race, expect to see some big moves come out. Looks like uh, Smith might be looking to bridge that gap. It's uh, back just a hair under a second mark, and he looks to be dropping that... Uh, the balance of that rest of that pack it almost looks like a single line of skippy uh skippy's uh, formula fords as they come down in the, through the heavy braking zone of turn three for the start of lap two corey yeah that's right Alex. i'm actually quite impressed with brett mcburney right now he's been leading the way this whole time and it looked like through the uh the second half of the lap on uh the previous lap there that he was starting to build up a little bit of a gap over tim hendrickson which is not easy to do especially when uh you know we're in these cars like just look at this gap as they come along the curvy back straight it's out to three tenths of a second but it looks so much bigger because of uh the speed that they're traveling and you know just the way that the cars compress and you know uncompressed throughout the uh the corners and the braking zones that's it as we see uh yeah mcburney really stretching his legs it was noted by the audience well, in the back there's a out of miles of spun Oh, Miles is gone. I think he might have taken Lynn. Uh, might have had a moment with him. He's certainly side by side. Let's check out what happened to Adam Miles. Breaking zone. The rear will go here. Just, oh, no. He's going to come into the tight left-hander. And the rear is going to go. And then, oh, Sarovsky's into the wall behind him. I was going to say both clowns still in the front pack. Uh, but that might, oh, gosh. We're going to do a... A Benny Hill style three-point turn. Thankfully, small field means there's uh, uh, no cars in and around, uh, and that's safely, safely done. Uh, I was about to say that, um, as was noted by the audience earlier on, as we see Hendrickson defending from Philippides into turn three. Uh, when was the last time you saw a 5.8k driver leading this one is Brett McBurney? who stands to gain 107 I rating if he hangs on for the win, Corey. That's insane. Yeah, that's exactly right, Alex. And um, we were just talking before the broadcast. Sam Devantia, who was at the time, uh, uh, I'm guessing, um, 8,993, uh, he only gained 7 I rating for finishing P2 in the warm-up race. So, uh, you know, he was the number one car, 9K, and he only gained seven I rating, which is nuts when you think about it. And look at Brett McBurney, who stands again 106 if he can take out the win here. But he's going to have some very stiff uh, opposition behind him, especially with Tim Hendrickson still just being right there and putting in the fastest lap of the race of 136.518. Yeah, well, here's the irony, right? So. This is how hard it is once you get up to that 9K. You mentioned P2 in, a, in a, essentially a 3K soft nets you 6. P4 in a 6K soft 
nets you one I rating. <laughs> That's a tough night out when you got to get a podium to sort of get it. It may be even double figures if you're lucky, but that is the lot in life of the cowboy at the moment. He's got uh, at least one 8K driver in front of him in Tim Hendrickson, who has got some great pace here. Looks like I watched that race earlier in the week, the broadcast race with uh, it was with Devantia and and um, Miles and, and Hendrickson. Uh, Hendrickson managed to get a gap and drive away from it. Looks like he's either the field, he's come back to the field or more likely the field sort of progressed uh, as the weekend has uh, has gone on. And now he's right in the thick of it. Uh, McBurney returns at a track that's obviously suiting him. Uh, and uh, uh, Filippides similarly right back uh, on form uh, and in this front pack. Devantia, I would say typically uh, most tracks he sits back and waits patiently for the latter third of the race or the last third of the race typically but this one realistically at this track Corey you, you've got to make the moves and make them count because uh, if you leave it too long there's no coming back well that's right Alex this is one of those tracks where it's so much easier to defend than it is to attack even in the skippies it's so much easier to defend than it is to attack and uh, you know this is why Brett McBurney he actually put in the fastest lap of the last lap too. 136, 288 to uh, eclipse the fastest time spent by Tim Hendrickson by a long way. And, uh, you know, he's not pulling away, but he's just doing what he needs to do, placing his car perfectly so Hendrickson doesn't even get a sniff at an overtake right now. And uh, this might actually end up netting him the victory if he can maintain this for the, uh, the rest of the eight laps we've got to go. Yeah, that's it. Although Hendrickson may well just be uh, be sitting there, um, biding his time as we ride on board with Philippides to get a view of our leaders, because there's a there's a lot of risk in making moves here, and uh, at this stage of the race, not necessarily a lot of rewards. As Philippides uh, did set the fastest time last time round with a 36 dead, uh, matching the pretty much spot on with the pole time of McBurney as they round. Uh, turn six once again this crucial corner up the back straight and we move back and just see that's what the gap looks like when it's about 0.6 of a second as I see Sorosky dropping down the order Corey yeah I just saw him dropping down the order too I'm not sure what happened to Vasco he's not had very much luck here in the last couple of races uh, looks like he's gotten himself going again maybe he had a slight rub in the wall or a bit of a spin so uh, hopefully he can get back going and uh get back into the fight once more but the leaders are still line to CERN right now it's a, a five car pack but looking at it Mark Lay starting to drop off the back of this pack just ever so slightly Alex yeah it does look like it the pace is certainly on up front he's still got draft from Devantia went and took a look at Sorosky unfortunately he's clipped the clipped the wall on the exit of five potentially trying to eke that last little bit in the setup for six which is an, an all important corner of course but uh yeah, this front five is now stretched out a bit. It's really a front three looking to dominate this one. Perhaps Devante not quite having the pace of the of the leaders, potentially, although he might still be able to bridge it. He certainly did last race. He bridged the gap between he and Hendrickson uh, to have a crack at it in the warm-up race. But at the moment, it's McBurney leading the way. From Hendrickson, Philippides, Devantia and Lay dropping off a bit at the back. Fraser Smith now up three positions from where he qualified in P9. And Medema similarly from 10th. Oh, here we go. Hendrickson's gone around the outside at... Uh, where's that turn? Oh, is, is McBurney dropping back still? I'm wondering if McBurney had an incident. Uh, I'm going to go... Oh. oh, yeah, he's definitely crabbing Alex. Oh, he's clipped the wall for sure. So much for that 100 I rating. And Hendrickson, looking to take full advantage, is off to the races. And this is going to cost Devante. Oh, he just got a bit impatient oh, no. and turned him. That's a crook one, unfortunately. See what happened to Hendrickson and McBurney. McBurney has clipped the wall of Swarovski style on the exit of turn five and then come back on the apex of so he has i suppose you're not really returning to the track you never leave it with the walls but that uh that saw him side by side and then we saw the course to here into the rear of him uh through the fountain section in turn eight but uh no doubt mcburney will pop into the pits this time round having had 
couple of loop de loops and that leaves Hendrickson and Philippides. Hendrickson with an eight tenths of a second gap and somewhat increasing up the straight. Uh, Devantia and Lay now off the back of Philippides. Uh, McBurney's uh, incident certainly breaking up this front five, Corey. Yeah, he's definitely scattered these guys quite a bit. And um, it looks like it's going to be very hard for uh, Dimitri to really try and catch up to Hendrickson here. He just doesn't quite have the uh, the single car pace as he did as uh, when he was right up on the gearbox of Hendrickson in that three car draft. And uh, Sandra Vantia back there in third as well. Uh, that incident with um, McBurney definitely halted his progress here. He's so far back from Dimitri. He's got to... Uh, He's got to catch up quite a bit to just get back into the draft of Dimitri to uh, have a hope of closing this gap. So hopefully with Mark Lay there with him, he can uh, get going here and try and get back into the draft of Philippides. He's got about half the race to do so, so I expect that he's uh, a fair chance of doing that. It's good, good pace as the cowboy, but uh, Henry Moore now uh, leading a battle pack uh, with Analdus and Lynn behind him. And just behind them is Corrigan in the Jim's mowing mobile, but Henry Moore, uh, who's up six positions from where he started, some of it through the misfortune of others. Others uh, have been through uh, his own efforts in learning the track pretty much. Uh, we do appreciate that kind of support. Someone going out and buy the track and having a crack uh, a few laps in, in one of the toughest uh, races of the week uh, in any series. But uh, great to see Henry Moore out there once again, Corey. Yeah, absolutely, Alex. And uh, it looks like he's handling the track pretty well, considering he's got such a small amount of uh, track time on it. I did kind of uh, half talk him into uh, joining in for the race during the warm up race, having uh, a chat to him in the spectator chat. But uh, it's great to see him out there. And he's starting to pull a gap now on uh, Arnold's and 1C Lin, as uh, they had a little bit of a stoush there behind him. And they just uh, allowed him to pull away ever so slightly as uh, Moore now heading up to try and catch up to Medema here to uh, try and get up into the top six. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Moore looking to get that uh, clean air behind him if he can at all do so. Corrigan now with the head clown uh, behind him. Sorosky sitting behind Corrigan. Down four spots is young Sorosky. Corrigan gave it to him pretty easily. Uh, when the time came in the warm-up race. Not so sure he'll do it in the big one, given the context of where they sit in the uh, in the field. Now, uh, there we go. Philippides, as we uh, come to the closing section, geez, he's giving it to the track of the car at this stage. He, uh, and that didn't even cost him. He's gained three tenths uh, in this uh, last lap or so. He's now, instead of eight tenths behind, eight and a half tenths, he's now four and a half tenths behind and well and truly in this one as he exits turn two on the run down to the threshold, breaking zone and primary passing opportunity at turn three, Corey. Yeah, that's right. He's been putting in the uh, the hard guards here and uh, being in the draft has definitely been helping him. Not that there is much draft to these cars, but uh, Philippides has been doing everything he can to close this gap. He's uh, turning into the corners to make him uh, just a little bit shallower so he doesn't lose as much speed. He's not floating out to the walls as much so uh, he can maximize his forward momentum. So uh, we'll see what he got here in the, uh, the next couple of laps because he's definitely on a charge and he wants to try and take home a win, Alex. Yeah, I don't know. No, Dimitri's never had the win. He's came, he came pretty close a couple of times. I remember a very eventful race at Barber Motorsports Park where I think it, it all opened up. Uh, it all opened up for him uh, rather like Bradbury style through the final corner. And then, uh, of course, there was incidents and chaos that followed that it cost him. But uh, here tonight, he's certainly in with a shot. Now, it's one thing to catch. It's another thing to pass. The blue and orange flying Dutchman uh, ahead of him. Now, Devantia and Lay. Lay still relatively, st I was going to say stuck like glue to the back of him. But uh, it's a little bit further than that, I would suggest. Maybe like a, a taut rubber band instead of glue. Now, Fraser Smith has uh, managed to exit stage left from the folks around him. And he's running a fairly lonely race in a little island there on his own. Medema and uh, similarly is ahead of Henry Moore 
who uh, has almost dropped the, the pair behind him, Vinaldus and Lynn, who uh, seem to be settled into running their own race and perhaps uh, a little battle. What's Lynn got for Medema down the, the front straight? Or the first straight of two main ones. Forces Lynn to go outside and then defends. This, of course, as I said, the primary passing opportunity. Side by side they go. Strong defense. There, as we see Sorovsky go through uh, past uh, Corrigan in the background, Corey. Yeah, it's good to see that Vasco is starting to uh, get back up a little bit. He hasn't visited the pits yet, though. So uh, I'm assuming the damage that he's got on that clown car is fairly minimal as he's going to try and make his charge up towards uh, 1C Lin once more. Uh, going back to our leaders now. And uh, I just want to point out the fastest lap of the race is set by Dimitri Filippides right now. A 135.597. Four tenths clear of uh, everyone else in this race, Alex. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's, uh, I mean, obviously draft assisted, but still, as you say, draft's not particularly strong in these cars, but useful and handy in setting the fastest lap, that's for sure. But uh, still, uh, Philippides, uh, again, similar, I was going to say stuck like, like glue on the back of the blue and orange uh, Team Torpedo car of tim hendrickson but he's, he's closed up a bit through that uh, that opening pair of corners and in fact if anything he's could he shape up here he is oh he's kind of half and yes and no and showing the nose and thinking better of it there's uh, about nearly two and a half to go a bit over two and a half i should say as they come through the uh, the second sector now of lap 11 corey yeah, this is where Dimitri is really going to have to start looking at sizing up an overtaking opportunity here. There's uh, realistically only two areas where you can make a pass, but uh, knowing these guys, they could pull one out of just about anywhere, uh, especially as I was saying, you know, the desperation move into turn 11. And, uh, you know, there's a couple other little places where uh, you could just sneak up on the inside of someone and uh, demand the track position. As you can see there, Dimitri trying to do everything he can, launching over the inside curb there of turn seven. And uh, I think the uh, pressure is getting to Hendrickson. I'm hearing him and seeing him getting right up close to these walls, just about brushing up against them every single time, Alex. Yeah, 100%. Now uh, starting to throw caution a little bit to the, to the wind, as it were, as we come to cross the line for the end of lap 11 with two to go Corey at this stage he only got a turning a two horse race who you got your money on uh San Dementio. I think these two are going to come across. <laughs> oh, that's a big call I tried that with Vasco back in Vasco with last week and I had no joy <laughs> oh, I reckon oh look oh, I'm gonna say Hendrickson just as I put the mockers on him because uh the Philippides is right up close surely he has to look this time Pulls to the inside. What's Henderson got around the outside? Breaks deeper. Runs side by side. They're still side by side in the exit of three on the run down to four now. Side by side they go through four. Henderson will have the inside at five. Angels fear to tread on the outside of five. And Dimitri Filippides backs out. The international man of mystery comes at him again. Surely he's got to set it up for six. Because seven's the next opportunity at the end of this big curved straight. And he didn't quite get the run, so I don't think it'll be here. I think it'll be next time he has a look will be at turn three. And I wonder this time if uh, Hendrickson defends it, Corey. Push the button, mate. Can't hear. Yep, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what I noticed there on the back straight was Philippides actually uh, pulled out of the draft there on the back straight. Uh, just ever so slightly as to uh, not pull himself in too close to Henderson because he didn't want to try and go for the move up on the inside of seven because it turns to the outside for eight, nine and ten if he couldn't get the move cleared. So uh, a little bit of heads up driving there, but uh, I hope it's not a little bit of uh, too little too late as we start heading towards the final lap here, Alex. Here we go. Last time through the white flag waves and here we go. Hendrickson leads it away. Philippides coming through. Tries to get the better eggs. It gets at least the equivalent. Now the draft will kick in. Hendrickson moves over to the left, confident that he can defend through the next series of corners as he showed last time round. Philippides pulls to the inside of the approach to turn three. Breaks heavy. Hendrickson again very deep on breaks. You can see the nose in front on entry. 
but through the corner we see Philippides, but the better drive from Henriksen. Oh, squeezes him tight. That could just be about it. Left just enough room and no more. Philippides now. All he's got is the one opportunity. It's the end of the back straight here. He goes through six. I don't know that he got quite the drive. Maybe they got a little rattled. As we see, Devant here has broken the back of his in his battle with lay behind. It's going to be Henriksen. I don't know that Philippides has got enough and he's pulling out of the drive. He's showing the nose. He's certainly... No deep lunges there for him. No deep squats or lunges. And it's going to be Hendrickson who's going to snake his way to the line. By the Oh, lays off in the background. Oh, no, the clown can't hit the wall, Corey. What's he got left for us? Oh, I'm not entirely sure, Alex. It's pandemonium right now as uh, Lay falling back into the clutches of Fraser Smith, who might sneak up into fourth here. Uh, coming out of uh, turns 13 and 14. Well, 12 and 13 now. It's uh, going to be pretty academic for who's going to come home with the win in this race as Tim Hendrickson flying away. He's still got a three-tenths of a second gap. He's going to win as he crosses the line. Philippides second. Santavantia coming home with a really nice third-place finish there. And somehow Mark Lay holds on to fourth over Fraser Smith in fifth. Oh, three wide in the background almost briefly as the second of the two cloud cars comes behind an Aldous and Lynn. Uh, and here comes Glenn Corrigan. He was gapped by Sarovsky the air by about three odd seconds. Uh, pulled away out of miles. One of the unluckiest SNL participants you'll ever see. Not far behind him on that front. He went from here to zero, unfortunately, did Brett McBurney. Contact with the wall on the exit of five, costing him... Oh, that's 166 or an 170 I rating turnaround from getting 106 to losing 65. That's got a tickle. Anyway, let's go check out our race results for the big one. Sunday Night Lights, Season 32, Round 11 from Bell Isle. Our biggest strength of field that I can recall since our uh, cut over to the Formula 4s with tick under 6,200. Tim Hendrickson comes out for Team Torpedo and takes out uh, with a strong performance. All but flag to flag once... Well, it wasn't really. He was behind McBurney for a while, but once he got a sniff of the lead, he was all but off to the races. Philippides did a stellar job bridging the gap, which I thought uh, he may not be able to, but then got in uh, right in the, in the thick of it. Took it to Hendrickson, but could not quite get it done in the end. But still, a stellar performance from uh, Philippides to finish in second ahead of the Cowboy, who's now, of course, for Cowboy Racing... Uh, he's finished in third. Another strong performance from Sam there. Uh, uh, locks in what has been a great season for him. Mark Lay for Team Clowns, trying to wrest the crown of head clown from the great Vasco Sarovsky. Uh, tonight uh, does a, a fantastic job. His second top five, or might even be his third, if I'm not mistaken, after taking a podium at Knock Hill uh, in either this or last season. Might have been this season. Uh, Mark with another strong performance in a 61 point something case off uh that's worth 73 i rating to him you'll be pretty happy i would have thought fraser smith similarly up four positions that's a good night out at a track like this he's finished in fifth and medema has uh similarly moved up four positions to finish in sixth and henry moore after buying the track uh, a couple of hours ago at best uh did not do so well in quali but moved up six positions uh perhaps racing a little bit more conservatively and nearly uh, in fact, uh, climbed into the top six. But uh, Henry managing seventh. Martin and Aldous for TNT Racing has finished in eighth. You won't see Lynn back for another crack at the big one. For Swift Cooper Racing, he's finished in ninth. For Head Clown, for Team Clowns, Vasco Sarovsky rounds out your top ten. Glenn Corrigan for Jim's Mowing has finished in 11th. Adam Miles on his return to Sunday Night Lights, unfortunately, brought the bad luck with him. Uh, but does round out your point scoring positions in P12. Brett McBurney similarly back from the... The Wilderness stuck it on pole, was leading it, and looked such a threat to the race overall for McFlabby Racing. Unfortunately, clipped the wall on five. Bit of a magnet there for the ANZ drivers here up the front. He's finished down 13th, and Witten uh, had a rough one here tonight. Uh, and unfortunately for the Team Milo driver, he rounds out the back end of the field there in 14th, Corey. Yeah, absolutely, Alex. And uh, it seems that there was only one bit of drama to come out of this race post-race, and uh, that was a post-checkered flag 4X uh, between Moore and Anuldos. So uh, uh, if that's the only drama to come out of this race, 
then uh, this has been a very successful and 99% uh, clean race. And, uh, you know, these guys put on an absolute show. Uh, a very unfortunate drivers down at the very back of the field, you know, Miles, McBurney, Witten. But, uh, you know, the guys at the front absolutely handled themselves so well. And uh, even Henry Moore, with his very, very limited lap times around here, uh, going out six positions to uh, get up into P7, uh, an incredible effort in uh, what is our highest strength of field here for the Formula Fords. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Now we've got a long queue in the uh, green room. We've got the top five waiting to come and say hello. So we might start with our race winner, Mr. Tim Hendrickson. Two hey, broad very good. <laughs> hey, mate, two broadcast races in a couple of days. Not a bad week out. Yeah, oh man, this this track's just so bloody fun to drive. It's such a challenge with all those walls. Um, and when when you when you nail it, that one lap out of the out of the millions you do, it feels so right. Um, the problem though is that there's there's always a little mistake on this track because because the margins are so bloody fine. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, beautiful, mate. Well, the pace was on. Uh, top strength of field. I was saying early on we. We saw some high 6K softs during uh, week 13 when these cars were released, were released, the likes of Verstappen and co racing with us. But not since then have we seen uh, fields approaching uh, 6.2K. So quality was up, pace was up, and nice. hopefully a good night out, yeah? Yeah. Um, you know, with the, I sent the message before to before the race to Dim, like, oh, we, we need to be careful because, you know, uh, I, I had a feeling Brett might hit a wall or two in that race and um i kept my distance early on and it really paid off when he actually did hit that wall um both me and dim were able to to sneak through and uh, i had some uh, had a couple of laps of of good racing uh, i was scared i squeezed him a little bit too much on the uh, on i think it's t3 on the final lap but uh, looking back at it it was all fine heart racing and uh, yeah we were uh, we were both quite happy with the result I could imagine, mate. Not often at uh, 8K you get 56 I rating for a race, so uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's a big one. So congratulations, mate. Great driving out there. Nice uh, nice win in a tough field. Anyone you'd like to give a shout-out to tonight? Well, Dim for just incredible pace this week. He's really he's really stepped up the, his, uh, his game at uh, this track, so uh, props to him for uh, for just incredible pace this week. Beautiful. All right, mate. Thanks for uh, coming out once again. Great drive tonight. Look forward to talking to you again soon. See ya. Bye. There you go, Corey. Uh, Tim Henderson, who uh, I wouldn't say, I was going to say stamped his authority on this one, but really uh, it was a fairly good matchup throughout and, uh, and did a great job to come away with a win. Very patient drive and well executed. Yeah, that's exactly right, Alex. He couldn't exactly say that he dominated this race either with uh, the early laps being dominated by McBurney and then uh, just Dimitri holding on for dear life and uh, putting the challenge up in those last couple of laps. Hendrickson had a good, hard-fought race, a very smart, clean race as well, and uh, the results show with him taking home the win and uh, you know a little bit of the predictive skills as well with the, uh, the guessing that McBurney was uh, probably going to end up in a wall at some point in the race. Well, you know, it's a reasonable bet to make, not necessarily because of Brett, but because of anyone in this field. Because as uh, Tim himself said, the margins are so tight. And to be fast here, you've got to really push the limits. And of course, as soon as you exceed the limits, as it's very easy to do, you're going to clip a wall. So we saw that same corner cost uh, Sarovsky and McBurney their races here tonight. And uh, not unusual, even at the top end of town. All right, uh, P number two tonight went to Mr. Dimitri Filipides. Welcome back to the front end of the field, mate. Top drive out there. Had the pace. I thought Hendrickson was going to get away, but you pulled him back in. Looks like you've enjoyed your racing here this week. Yeah, it was good. I mean, it's, uh, it's definitely a tough track, uh, tough to overtake, and uh, yeah, just tough to keep it on track for 13 laps. Even 15, because qualifying is already quite difficult. Yeah, that yeah, was good. <laughs> yeah, it just looked like a bit of patience out there, and then you really took it to Tim at the end there. I side by side racing a couple of times, and then uh, just not quite the, the turn uh, six onto the back straight, not quite able to get there to have a crack at him at turn seven. Yep, probably a bit cautious as well uh, in my overtake on uh, turn three, is it? Yeah, that's but anyway. At least I finished the race. Didn't want to throw it away. It's just so tight around there through that uh, that, that section. I went too wide with Brett a few times uh, over the week. It's tough. 
Yeah, absolutely. Throw a bit of net code because we're all around the world and uh, it makes it very difficult. But uh, yeah, but mate, strong performance, fantastic return to the front end of the field. Well done. And anyone you'd like to say good day to while you're here? Oh, well, you guys, thanks again for organizing every week. Uh, yeah, haven't uh, come onto the chat for a while, but yeah, thanks a lot, guys. No worries. Thanks, Dimitri. Great to see you out there, mate. Congratulations again. Top drive. Thanks, mate. There you go, Corey Dimitri Philippides. It's been a while since we've seen him at the pointy end. Uh, of course, he was fairly familiar with it in the skips, but uh, over in the Fords, he's uh, come away with a great result, which I have no doubt was on the back of hard work this week. Oh, absolutely, Alex. Uh, the best way to get better at any car in uh, iRacing is to just put in the laps and uh, put in the time to do the laps. And, uh, you know, it's clear to see that Dimitri has absolutely done that this week. Um, he is definitely my driver of the day because uh, he put in such a stellar effort. And, uh, you know, if he wasn't so cautious going for the moves on those couple of laps, we might have seen a side-by-side -side battle for even longer than what we did see. But um, you could just tell he's absolutely chuffed with the second place. It's his best result in the Formula Fords. And uh, hopefully more of those results come in his way as the uh, season draws ever closer to closing. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Not a bad one to do it in either. <laughs> the strongest field in history. That goes all right. Now, final spot on the podium was filled by the Cowboys, Sam Devantia. Sam uh, didn't qualify where you wanted to. And then the, the, the melee around the probably the, the halfway point, the race opened it up and uh, just not able to get to have a crack at Tim again this time around. I think a P4 is actually pretty good for this track, honestly. A 6.1k 6, 6 soft, I can't complain, really. No, it was pretty tough. Um, I gotta get back to Dim. He did pretty well tonight, so I got to Dim. So did Brett. I mean, he, he smacked the wall and he's trying to get out of the way and I tagged him. So yeah, sorry, Brett. Yeah, that was an unfortunate one, mate. I could just imagine the, conf the conflicting emotions at the time. He's desperate to hang on to the guys in front not let them get away because it's so hard then to bridge a gap. And then uh, you've got the stricken McBurney going through. Unfortunate one for both of you. It, uh, Brett obviously had a, a loop-de-loop -loop and uh, and then it cost you a chance to be in the front battle. But uh, that's the way it goes sometimes, mate. You had a couple of strong drives here. Probably not your strongest track, but as you say, a podium here and the strongest race in history, not a bad thing to walk away with. I Honestly, I think it's one of my strongest tracks just yeah. Just the pure pace, you know, doing a race spot yesterday, the prime time when this car, they chose this car, and yeah, that's about it. Yeah, beautiful. All right, mate. Well, congratulations. Another podium under the belt, and hopefully uh, continues to go well for the the final race this season. Uh, anyone you'd like to give a shout-out to before we let you go? Cheers to you guys. Obviously, you know, everyone rocked up tonight here, and Tim and Dim on the podium. Congrats to Dim. Well done. Well yeah, done. Absolutely. Thanks, Sam, mate. Look forward to talking again soon. Yeah, yeah. That was the Cowboys, Sound of Antia, uh, another podium under the belt and uh, a strong drive uh, as always. Yeah, absolutely, Alex. And uh, you can tell that normally we get the uh, slightly dejected of Antia when he finishes, you know, third, fourth or fifth. But uh, you can tell he really enjoyed the racing around here. Um, he's qualified uh, not too bad considering uh, some of his past qualifying efforts in the series so far this season. So, uh, you know, he just did everything he needed to do to uh, keep it up within the conversation of uh, being involved in the uh, the top group. And uh, that's exactly what he needs to do to uh, just try and cling on to any hope of, uh, you know, challenging for the championship, which I'm not sure whether he's actually a factor for anymore with uh, his couple of bad performances. But uh, I think he's still pretty much within the fight alex yeah absolutely we'll find out uh next week when the season comes to a close now with another strong drive there was uh you know running making his claim to the to the head clown positions young mark lay top drive mate p4 in the biggest race in history nothing to sneeze at huge night huge night so much fun out there yeah, absolutely, mate. Uh, so you were stuck to the back of the cowboy there. Uh, were you looking forward or back in those early stages? Look, in the first couple laps, I was just I was trying to keep up. And then in my rearview mirror, I see puffs of smoke here, puffs of smoke there. Brett's gone. Adam Miles is gone. It's like, and then I get stuck behind Sam Devantier. Now, usually that kid's fast, but he wasn't fast today. So I'm stuck behind him. I can't get past him. I think I must have had damage or something. Anyhow, I'm stuck behind him, and, you know, that's where it ended up. But, you know, 
heck of a race from these guys, Tim and Dimitri. They should have been fighting more. They weren't. Uh, you got Fraser Smith nipping on my heels there. You got Funky Cold Medema right there and Henry Moore. Those kids are fast. I was just happy to be there. Yeah, nice work. And tell me what was going through your head at turn seven on the last lap if it wasn't the rear of your car. That was a scene. I had a seniors moment right there, a little seniors moment. I didn't know where I was. I kind of like woke up and I'm just like, oh, I'm racing. So I had to pick it up and, you know, make sure that Fraser didn't get in front of me. <laughs> That's it, mate. Beautiful stuff, mate. Great to see you out there in the top five. Strong performance there. Massive gains. 73 I rating, I think. Congratulations, top drive. Anyone you'd like to give a shout out to tonight before Look we let you go? All. Obviously, my my team clouds Vasco. He he must have had something going on there. I'm going to see the the broadcast with my dinner here. See what happened to him. But some bad luck. And uh, then you know we got the the new clown there, Don. We stole him from uh, from Team Milo, and he's uh, he won the uh, the second uh, second split race there. He should have been up there. He would have been up there, right probably right behind me in this one. Yeah. So absolutely. shout out to those guys. Yeah, perfect. Crazy. I felt so bad for Donald talking to him earlier. Said, oh, you'd be right, mate. First split, no worries. And then, of course, he's kind of away to the second split. Oh, yeah, he's been fast this week, too. That kid's got pace. Love yeah. to have him on the team. Yeah, absolutely. Well, great job, Mark. Great to talk to you as always. Look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. See you guys. Yeah, Corey Mark Lay. Once again, laying claims to the head clown role this week, but I think uh, Vasco's probably still got the wood on him to some extent, but the rivalry's there. Throw in Donald and the other clowns waiting in the wings, and we got something. Oh, absolutely, Alex. And I think uh, Mark Lay just took the moniker of uh, entertaining interviewee uh, away from Enzo because uh, that was uh, quite the interview presence that he's got there. And, uh, look, he's put in the hard yards as well. Uh, he was 11 car and he finished in P4, which just goes to show, as we always say every week, the number on the car means jack all because uh, he put in some good laps there. He just held on to Sam for as much as he could. He made one mistake the whole race, but uh, he didn't let that uh, ruin his position. He maintained that fourth position and uh, he come home pretty strong there. Yeah, I think uh, the effort that Mark's put in over the last few months uh, really shows. Uh, and he's starting to reap the rewards of those efforts on track here. P4 in uh, the strongest race in history. Fantastic performance and uh, and top drive. And congratulations to, to Mark. Now, uh, our final driver in the top five, final person in the booth tonight, Fraser Smith, who was up four positions from qualifying in ninth. Not his strongest night out in quali, but a good drive through the field there, Fraser. Yeah, it wasn't bad. I mean, I've got a qualifying monkey on my back, I think. I just, yeah, I mean, this... As always, I don't really race the car in the week. So in going into quality, I was just, to be honest, my goal was just to not hit any walls. And when you think about the walls, you tend to hit them. So yeah, that's right. And of course, yeah. easier said than done around here too. Not hitting the walls. There's plenty of them. They're nice and close. And to go fast, you got to get really close to them. So, and then uh, a nice patient drive throughout, and uh, you almost snuck a top four when Mark had a seniors moment on the last lap. Yeah, I had to stay disciplined. And when I saw him hit the wall, it's so easy to start pushing too hard. But I just thought, like, if he's got damage, I'll get him. If not, I never catch him. So it was like that for the last five laps, really. I, I was catching Sam a little bit. And then I looked and thought, you know, three seconds. Um, I was not going to close that in five laps. So I just sort of held on to what I had, really. But I'll take it. Yeah, why not, mate? Top five, strongest race in history. Nothing to sneeze at there either. But congratulations, mate. Uh, great to see you out there again. Anyone uh, you'd like to give a shout-out to tonight? Yeah, yourself and Corey, as always, and everyone that turned up, and especially Mark. He seemed to do really well. I'm sure he was happy, so yeah. Absolutely. Great to see you, mate. Uh, look forward to hopefully seeing you for the final round next week. You sure will. Beautiful. Thanks, mate. Hey, yeah, Corey Fraser Smith, who uh, once again out there in the Brown Bomber. I thought he drew one in early, uh, but uh, managed to move his way forward a fair way, considering the strength of this field and uh, and the race that unfolded before him. The button, mate, it's still there. Yeah, it's still there, and I keep forgetting to press it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Fraser Smith, always uh, one of the real fast drivers that we have. 
Um, he's one who, you know, if he doesn't qualify well, we'll consistently see him uh, working his way through the field to uh, get his way up towards the front. And, uh, you know, that's exactly what he did here tonight and made his way up into uh, the top five, which is nothing to sneeze at. And, uh, you know, he's uh, channeling the spirit of uh, the aircraft that that car's paint is based off of with the way that he usually cuts through the field. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do next week because it's a difficult track and uh, I reckon he's got the skill to uh, make something good of it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, those playing at home, championship points-wise, Hendrickson picks up 311 championship points for taking that one out. Unbelievable. Anyway, massive field. Congratulations to everyone who was there. But that might do us for tonight. Uh, Corey, what do you got coming up at home? Uh, got coming up this week, if you want to tell the folks at home. Um, so this week is actually uh, going to be a very difficult emotional week for me um, as tomorrow we're putting down my puppy. But um, on Wednesday, the uh, Output Racing League is actually in an off week. So uh, there will be nothing on the Aussie Sim Commentator channel. But um, the Reverb series on the Friday is still a go. And I think it's the final race of the season there. And that will be from the Martinsville Speedway. So uh, a, a nice tight little track, and uh, that one should be some fun in the uh, the late model stock cars, which are, are always a good fun to race at. But uh, then it's back with you next week, Alex, as we tackle the VIR full course to uh, wrap things up for the season. Yeah, sorry to hear that, mate. Thoughts are with you during the week. It will be a tough one for you, but hopefully uh, your spirits will be lifted as we round the uh, Season 32 out next week at VIR and the folks will come out and put on a great show to lift all our spirits at the end of the season and the end of next week. But for now, folks, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we do appreciate your support both on and off the track. Uh, whoa, let's get rid of the double up there. Hang on, let's let's try that one again. Check us out, all the race replays of this season, all the other 32 seasons of Sunday Night Lights over at the top split on YouTube. And of course, we'll be back here, as Corey said, next week for the final round, season 32 on Top Split TV here on Twitch. But for now, folks, thank you as always for joining us. Um, your support is very much appreciated, this grassroots level of sim racing. Um, on behalf of the Cody by Mr. Corey Steinhauser, Steinhauser, I'm Alex McKellar, and until next week, I will say ciao for now.